A very good morning to you. Welcome to the midweek edition of the show. Promises to be exciting as always. I'm Yemi Adebayo. And I'm Cecilia Mogbe. And we're starting with all the way from Manchester United, where Odio Engalo has got a jersey number right now. He's been unveiled. All the jerseys you've been seeing, people putting on him. We have the official one. Uh, Odio Engalo, officially, he will be wearing number 25. And that's the number that was le left vacant by Antonio Valencia. Valencia spent about 10 seasons with Manchester United. So that's his number and that's the jersey he will be wearing when they face Chelsea on the 17th yeah. of this month as if he plays. He begins to play. <laughs> Alright, so uh, hands off speculation of Photoshop, everything. That's Odion uh in the new um, the, the, the number is going to be wearing, and of course, officially now in a United kit. All right. So uh, let's see football now and um, move on on the show. And let's quickly uh, talk about what the D Tigers are doing, how they're preparing for uh, the Olympics. And of course, the man in your picture, we're talking about uh, Golden State Warriors assistant, associate head coach Mike Brown is uh, the new D Tigers coach for the 2020 uh, Olympics. And that's uh, what's going to happen. Top class manager for the D Tigers. Absolutely. A new man in charge right now. Okay, also on the program, we'll talk about this man, James Harden. Well, he's back to putting up some big numbers. James Harden put up 40 points on the ninth. And of course, he was just one rebound shy of uh, a triple double. Uh, in their game against the Charlotte Hornets, 125 and 110 it ended, but then he was on a spectacular run, 12 3 in the fourth quarter, and of course, that enabled his team to secure that close control. Okay. All right, that's how we uh, start off the show uh, today, taking a look at uh, the NBA. There's going to be a lot of uh, NBA stories on the show today and stories around basketball for you. But let's start you off with uh, the results and, of course, tell you the stories behind uh, the results. Let's start with the San Antonio Spurs uh, losing to uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, 102 points to 129. I'm very sure the results will come up uh, shortly uh, on your screen. There you have it. San Antonio Spurs uh, losing to the Los Angeles uh, Lakers. And, of course, we have the Milwaukee Bucks, of course, beating the New Orleans Pelicans, 120 points uh, uh, to 108. We also have the, uh, the Portland Trail Blazers, uh, of course, uh, losing to the Denver Nuggets, 99 points to 127. We have the Charlotte Hornets also losing to the Houston Rockets. That's a game we're going to be talking about uh, on the show as well. A lot of interesting uh, results there, of course, for James Harden, who's going to get uh, our attention. Uh, <laughs> 40-point performance uh, in that one. But this is like can take us to uh, some of the highlights, uh, stories, and some of these amazing numbers. Yeah, I think it's all about Yanis and the New Orleans Pelicans. You know, everyone was thinking, okay, having Zion back and, okay, the way he played and everything, but Yanis having 34 points. We'll talk more about them, you know, when we're looking at the top guys. But then the pictures you have on your screen is the game between the Lakers and the San Antonio Spurs for the Lakers. Uh, they're back at the Staples Center. They cruise to 129 and 102 victory. LeBron James are uh, scoring 36 points. 19 of this one he got in the fourth quarter. Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma scored 18 points uh, each. Uh, um, Kuzma added 12 rebounds for himself because the Lakers winning at home for the first time since the death of Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant and eight others in that helicopter crash. Helicopter crash that happened on January the 26th. Uh, well, it was a good night for them, you would say, being able to get this victory out of the way. They opened the game by making just one of their first eight shots from the field in their first game since that Sacramento Kings lost. Yeah. You know, and still managed to go 9 of 19. That's 47.4% 47, 47 from the field in the first quarter, and they took that 21 and 19 lead. But then the Lakers were not finished yet. They pushed the advantage to 51 41 in the first quarter, holding the Spurs to 36.2% as shooting. Of course, they were also holding a 30-17 rebounding advantage. So it was uh, a good night. A good night for uh, James. You know, James was named Western Conference Player of the Month for January earlier on Tuesday. Of course, he had a nine assists to it, and it was six of nine from three points range. Um, McGill scored 14 points. Dwight Howard also contributed 12 points and level rebounds for the Los Angeles Lakers. You see this was really a good one. They needed to, you know, 
uh, show up on the night. And, and of they course, did. they said we're going to show up on the night. And people already tipping them for the ring simply because of what happened on January 26th. Just saying that they can just do this and do it for Kobe. That's what they would have wanted them to go ahead and do. But then a good performance for the, from all the players on mm -hmm. the night. Yeah, good to performance. You could see the camaraderie. You, yeah. You could see... Um, um, the spirit. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were together. This is just, yes. there's something about whether or not they will go on and win for Kobe. I don't know. I don't know. It's still a long way. <laughs> yeah, still a long, long way season. to go. But incidents like this has mm -hmm. a way of bringing people together. Has a way of uh, you, you just see the chemistry. You know, the guys playing for for each other. Everybody focused on just that one yeah. goal. And even before the Kobe incident, we, we, we've said Lakers are contenders. They, they would lose one or two games on the road, but surely they are contenders. So we'll see how um, the team gels. Yeah. You know. Issues like this are defining moments. Absolutely. And I get if their, if their determination was on 70% before, mm -hmm. after the Kobe incident, I'm very sure he's 100%. So we'll see how far they can go. Absolutely. That's what we'll see. Let's just take a look at the guys who put up the numbers. We mentioned James Harden earlier. He got 40 points on the night. Of course, LeBron James is also part of that squad. Yes, there you have him. It's just one shy of having a triple-double 40 points game. It was 49 and two of, and remember the Houston Rockets are without Russell Westbrook, but then that did not just you know affect them in any way because uh, they had to put up some big numbers to be able to uh, get this particular victory against the Charlotte Hornets. So it was James Harden, as Yemi mentioned earlier, who was the man who, who was more like he was in charge of the whole thing yeah. and his team were able to get the victory. Especially when his duo, Capella yeah. and uh, <laughs> West, Westbrook, yeah. uh, didn't show up. Then, of course, we got to talk about LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron, of course, uh, 36, 7, and 9. Of course, his numbers helped the Lakers a great deal to be able to get that victory over the San Antonio Spurs on Tuesday night. Let's move on to another player who also put up some big numbers on the night and also helping the team to get some victory. Braden Egan, you know, he got these numbers, but mm -hmm. then it just wasn't enough because when you have uh, You're someone You're up against like, Yanis. Precisely. So, Yanis surged forward in that fourth quarter. I and mean, his numbers were just not enough for Ingram. And of course, the guy, the guy we talked about, mm -hmm. Yanis, 34, 17, and 6. Also, he was named Eastern Conference player for January and all this. So, this guy's having some good numbers on the night. It was this one that actually helped them to pull away from the New Orleans Pelicans because all eyes were obviously on Zion. I mean, when you have the number one draft pick, all eyes always be on him. But when you're playing against the Bucks, of course, the Bucks had the better of them. A, a lot of people are already talking about Zion. A lot of people are saying he should have the ball more. Yeah. It should be the vocal point. Uh, maybe the coach is trying to be cautious. Yeah. This guy just got back a lot. But some people say he's ready. Just just give that responsibility to him. But but we'll see. We'll see how far uh, it can go. Uh, yeah, let, let's come just home. 20 points. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and talk some uh, grassroots uh, basketball. Yeah, grassroots basketball. No, just uh, on Monday. Yeah, she's been around for since Monday talking about China. Ogumike, she's been in Lagos since Monday and was just doing different programs. But uh, on Tuesday, she was at uh, Teslin Balogun Stadium, mm -hmm. the Into Sports Hall, meeting with uh, the basketball players, you know, in Nigerian League, talking about the MBBF Zenit uh, Women's League. Uh, players from MFM Basketball Club, yep. you have Dolphins Basketball Club, and also First Bank Basketball Club. So met, she met with all of them, you know, just talking to them on you know, you're not just going to play basketball forever. There are other things you can do. And most of these girls actually learned a lot because they were asking so many questions, yeah. you know, concerning the fact that, look, I'm in Nigeria. I don't even have hope of playing in WNBA. And she was like, come on, you don't have to play in WNBA to be a better person or a better player and all that. You can also play in Europe. She, for instance, you know, when she uh, got drafted, she was, remember, number one draft pick and all that, joining her sister, Nika. So we have two of them. And I think that's the first time you're having two sisters mm -hmm. drafted as number one in WNBA. Both of them Nigerian, of course. The Americans, we know. They couldn't play for the D, -tig uh, D Tigers because right from the very beginning, these girls were like, the American system saw them from the under 16, 18. They were already the playing. Talent. Precisely. They were already playing for the basketball team and all that. So before you know it, they were national teams going to the Olympics you know, and everywhere. Think, but then this, yeah. for, for our youngsters, having yeah. this, it's, it's good. Uh, the transition is always... I mean, you just... I mean, took the words out of my mouth. You see, 
somebody loves basketball, yeah. play basketball, but doesn't see the future. <laughs> and it's like wasted time. You yeah. know, and so you have somebody like this shows up, yeah. comes to you and tell you, look, don't, don't think there's a golf. Don't think there's something that stops yeah. you from becoming whatever you want to become. Uh, you might become a professional basketball, but even if you don't, there's still a lot of things you could do with your life. And I, I'm very happy with the fact that she's empowering um, uh, this. Look, unlocking the mind is very key. Yeah, so it's one it of the is. greatest things you can do for an individual. You know, like they say, um, if you believe you can do it, you're right. If you believe you can't do it, you're also right. Yeah, that's so, right. So um, I guess telling, telling those girls that, look, you, you can be whatever you want to become. And for girls playing... You know, it gives a lot of disadvantages in Lagos and everywhere. To have somebody like that come, uh, it would stir them up and Absolutely. they would have the drive to surmount the challenges that are enormous in this part of the world. But knowing that, look, if, if this lady can do it and she's here telling me I can do it, then I should believe I can do it. Absolutely. Let's hear from her, you know, talking to those girls because we also get to hear from the girls also what they've learned from a program like this. Learning from this program, I get to have that courage that, yes, someday I will be among those playing in the WNBA. Because my dream is to be among the top players and having things like this giving us the opportunity to get that. Uh, most of the things I do uh, is to practice hard. Do, like, maybe if I do work out for, like, give my 100%, I'll try to make it 120%. And try putting myself to play with most of those top competitions. And I know with that, I'll get to there. Basketball is a means to an end. It's not the end. It's, some, it's a process. So basketball is part of the process that takes athletes, that takes girls, guys, to the better future, faster, just like she said. You know, because normally, if you have to go to school, if you have to do so many things, it might come a little bit slower. But with basketball, you get things a bit faster because you have connections, because you went to school. And because through basketball, there are so many people who have gone through, um, done so many great things like that. So you get inspired by people like Chini and her sister and all of that. Yeah, so that's one thing I learned from her. I, I learned a lot. And like the question I asked, I really learned that even without basketball, you can still live a good life. Even without playing in the NBA, you can still make it. You can go to school, pursue your career then, or if you can't go to school, if you know your head is not too well in the school, you can learn a trade. Or do something else. You can learn how to make your hair, learn how to sew, any other thing. Because you can't play basketball forever. Then what is behind? So with that, you, you know, after basketball, there is something behind. That, that's what I've learned. Playing basketball is something I've, I've really enjoyed and it's my career. Even aside from that, I've, I know I've laid the foundation, even going to the university. I've landed up my university, so I know after that, even after basketball, there is life to it. And I still have other things doing, aside from even the university I attended. So with the basketball, with my school career, and with what I'm doing, I know, yes, I'm still going higher. And with God, I'll go to the top. Okay, I mean, that's all the learns from it. It's so much because uh, the kind of questions we were asking were so enormous that she kept talking and talking and talking. We have a guest in the studio. Uh, we Fred Mong. It's been a while. Good morning. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, always coming here. And it, has it really been a while? I was here in January. So, Are you yeah. sure? Yes, I was. Once. Uh, you know, you were it. Okay. Yeah. So. It's the second time this year. Oh, well, we are in the second month of the year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we Fred, it's, like, it's, it's nice to have you join us. Yeah, you, yeah. you just saw some clips. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, talking about inspiration, talking about mm. helping um, youngsters, female basketball players cross the bridge, get across the divide, you know, from being just an ordinary basketball player to mm. becoming whatever they want to become in life. If it is becoming a professional basketball player, fine. But knowing that you can make something out of your life, and mm. that's what mm. uh, Gumike has been doing. And I don't know your thoughts about that. No, actually, it's very fantastic uh, for the fact that she decided to come here. I remember before coming, she actually did tweet about her coming, asking about if um, sports journalists who practice here in Nigeria. So, and all of a sudden, she came around. And what this tells you is that she's one of the biggest 
persons there when you talk about the WNBA mm -hmm. and even the, the vice president uh, when you talk about the, the women game there in the US and deciding to come home and impact on those girls, then that tells you that she, uh, her, her heart is home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just hope that um, the girls have really learned so much from this and it, it wouldn't just end at just participating at the event that they'll really be motivated to push further uh, beyond this. One thing again I like about the NBA is uh, most times uh, most of the players would get drafted actually educated yet so that tells you that sports and education they go hand in hand and let's just hope that those ladies also would follow that same suit it's very very uh, typical of basketball players uh, a lot of them go to school unlike what we have in football most of the time but i think there's a very good development and i hope that those ladies will get better at it and i, I agree with you with all that you said uh, our answers stems or comes from the part that she has passed to wherever she's mm -hmm. you talk about the combination between education mm -hmm. and, and sports not having to sacrifice one, one for, for the, the other, other. Mm -hmm. but also let's also put in context that a lot of people pass through all their collegiate system and mm -hmm. all of those things not all of them become yeah professional not all basketball players mm -hmm. but at least they have something to fall back mm -hmm. and that's one of the lessons mm -hmm. some of these great basketball players say that mm -hmm. the game teaches you i totally agree also and uh, the, the good thing about the education part which i spoke about is um for sportsmen their career really don't last that long it's a very uh, exactly so short be, span very short span and injury could even make it shorter. Cut it sh yeah. Yeah. So once you leave the spot, there's something to fall back on. Yeah. And so, and again, you get to avoid certain pitfalls. I've seen people <laughs> talk about contractual pitfalls. Oh, I didn't know when I penned mm -hmm. that deal and all the rest. So it's it's really good. But for the fact that she's been celebrated in the US and she's coming back home, oh, I like yeah. that fact. Uh, I get so. Yeah. Yeah. And also the fact that, you know, usually when we see these former players coming, you know, they focus on the men and some <laughs> of them focus on just kids with, within the ages of maybe 5 to 12. Mm. Those are trying to come up. But these are league players. They are already in the system. Yep. They are playing in the league already. Mm. She's just trying to tell them, look, fine, you may, you may not be able to play in WNBA or anything, but Go then there are other things you can actually do. Go to Europe because mm -hmm. she did it, you know, after her rookie year, she yeah. went to Italy. She's been to Russia, you know. That's when she picked up that injury. She was away for like two Two seasons, two years, she didn't play basketball. But then I love what she said about that, that even if she didn't play basketball, she discovered herself during that th two mm -hmm. years, you know, working with the ESPN now as an analyst uh, and all yeah. that basketball. But let me stop talking and just hear from her directly what she had to say concerning that and also why she decided to come home and talk to the, these girls. At the end of the day, athletes know that we can't play forever. You're lucky if you play for 10, 15, 20 years. But what are you going to do with sport? What are you going to do with the platform that sports gives you? I think for them, they could be future coaches. They could be mentors. They could be teachers. They can be anything they want. But right now, they're strong, powerful leaders in their communities, knowing that as women, naturally, we're excellent multitaskers. So don't limit yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. Know that there's so much more to life. But basketball is an excellent platform for you to do something amazing. I think I took my injury and I had to use positivity to help me get through it. But I turn, turned my injury from injury into opportunity because it allowed me time to reflect. It allowed me to realize that basketball is not forever and what else am I going to do? And in that interim t period where I was injured, that's where I found my ESPN national broadcasting career. So if I didn't have that adversity and I didn't say yes as a woman to many opportunities, I wouldn't be even in this position where I have a platform to represent. I always tell people, like, I'm not the only like woman there but I can tell you I'm probably the only Nigerian woman there and representation matters young black females that are athletes not many people in the broadcast game like that so to me just being able to go through an adverse situation no matter what it is in life staying positive and also just seeking out new opportunities you never know what basketball changed my life I didn't see that coming but I just feel very blessed for all of it It's actually changed so many people's lives. I love that. She was ready for it. I mean, sometimes you get the opportunity and when you're not ready, you really can't fit in. But she was yeah. ready. And that's when, when she got a job from ESPN, of course, she Boom. just key into it. Uh, and yeah. that's what the, the girls need to learn. I love mm -hmm. when I talk to some of the girls, 
The thing they were saying is the fact that fine, they're playing basketball, but they're doing other things mm. because basketball league, we know, we can't even go there. <laughs> NBF league is some I play for two months. We not play for the rest of the year and mm. all that. So they're doing other things right. outside. And, and, so, what also great. struck me is the fact that there's going to be adversity. You mm -hmm. just deal with it when it comes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's the way it is. We need to go on a break now. We'll come back. Of course, we're talking about the new coach of the D Tigers. Surprise for everyone who heard it over the night that there is a new coach in the block for the D Tigers. <laughs> 